Good to see you. How you been? Good. Good. Yeah. How was your weekend? Good. Did you do anything fun? Yeah. Did you get a chance to? Yeah, I went to my um, grandma's. She yeah. went swimming. Cool. Good. Well, it's a good time, man. How's life? Good. Yeah. It's really good to see you, by the way. You got older, too. How old are you now? Ten. Yo, bless the name of the Lord with me real quick, will ya? Bless the name of the Lord with me real quick, will ya? One more time. Where are you at? God, we bless your name today, and we just uh, are so happy to be here in this beautiful day to worship you and your creation and to bless your name on this street right now and to bless your name out loud in Kenmore and to enjoy this weather and enjoy this fellowship and enjoy all these people that you brought our way. And we pray that you move and you do a work in everybody that comes to join us. In everybody today, we just pray that you do a fresh work. Thank you that we're talking about being on a city, a city on a hill and a light on a stand today, but we really genuinely get to be. <laughs> we're not just talking about it hiding out somewhere. We're actually out in the open getting the chance to be that. So I pray that you'd empower all our conversations. I pray that you'd empower everything we're doing today. I pray that hospitality would just flow out of this place. Mission would flow out of this place. Your love would flow out of this place. 
people would taste your love as they step into this place right here, into this area. We just claim it as yours. Uh, we pray for warmth and love and hospitality and joy to just exude out of your people today into the lives of anybody that would join us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? amen. Yeah. We can hand out song sheets, man. We'll sing this first one. You can jump right in with us. Yeah? If we got, I think, we, I think uh, they got them back there at the table. And if you got them yet, we'll hand them out and then we'll get going in a minute. Get into any posture of worship that's comfortable for you, standing, sitting, kneeling, raising your hands, and just praise God with me. Will you praise him with me today? Yes. Who's ready to praise God today? Come on. Yeah. Right out of the gate. Let's jump into it. Yo 
down the road, y'all. Come on, give him some love. from uh, the church. He does worship over and helps with the worship at Akron uh, Christian Redeemed Church of God right down the road. A couple blocks. So, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you surprise here. us. Been here. Been here. Yeah, one church, one body, y'all. Yeah. That's how we do it. Come on up and do some announcements for us, Miss Sarah. We just had a random like uh, worship jam for a minute. So. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. Is this one on, Ben? Hi, everybody. All right. Welcome to Street Lake Community Church. I just, um, I love that. Thank you for sharing with us, Abidun. And I love the picture of like Abidun's in like a full suit, you know, Ben's in t shirt and shorts, and we're all worshiping Jesus, right? And it's so cool. So I just love that. Um, check out our website if you haven't already at streetlight.life. We do update that regularly. So that's a place where you can find information about our church if you're looking for it. And then, of course, you can always contact us if there's something that you need. That's not on there. Our vision, if you know it, please say it with me. It's from Jesus' Great Commission. We'll say it slowly. Here we go. To invite everyone into a lifelong relationship with Jesus. It's that simple. We partner with Urban Missionaries here, and we invite everyone to participate in Urban Mission in a way that makes sense for you. It's not going to look the same for everybody, uh, but we want you to come and participate with us in a way that makes sense for you. Can we give a hand and a warm welcome for our guests today? Thank you for joining us. We are so thankful for you. Wow. Including a Bia Dune. Yes, yeah. a Bia Dune. Thank you so much. A good trumpet player. A good trumpet player. Trumpet's yeah. hard, too, by the way. <laughs> I remember trying that like in seventh grade. Did you guys try all the instruments? It's trumpet really is hard. super hard, right? Really hard. <laughs> when it sounds good, it's awesome. Um, first Friday, and this last Friday, so just a couple days ago, was great. So we just want to celebrate that. If you were down here, um, wasn't it great? Make some noise. Even if you weren't down here, make some noise for First Friday. We just love First Fridays here on the Boulevard. Brings so much life down here to Kenmore Boulevard. There's all kinds of music going on right next to our table that was right in front of First Glance. We also got to have um, First Glance Hip Hop along with Glory and the Beat Hip Hop concert happening, and that was really exciting to have positive hip-hop going on down here in the boulevard, so it was awesome to have them. All right, if you are a guest, please fill out a connection card. Those are going to be over at the table over there, and we can get you a connection card, and we will give you a free gift if, you, if it's your first time, or even if it's your second or third, but you haven't filled out a card yet, and you want to do that. We love to give a gift from a local business, so we will give you that. You also can uh, email us if you have any questions to hello at streetlight.life. But we do only give that gift if you fill out a paper connection card. I really want to encourage you to fill out a card if you're new too, okay? 
please do it. Because yes. we want to give you a free gift and we want to plug you in with what we're doing. And we will not show up at your house with a helmet light on. <laughs> we promise. Like, we, promise. we really are just going to throw you in an email list and we want to get you a free gift as well and plug you in with what we're doing. Sound good? Yes. Yeah. So Absolutely. fill one out. Fill one out. Fill one out. Did I mention fill one out? <laughs> So thank you again to all of our volunteers. We're so thankful for our volunteers, those that serve here on Sunday mornings. Speaking of volunteers. Can we give a hand for the volunteers though? We can. We love our volunteers. You guys are the ones that make this place happen. We're so thankful for all of the roles that you, that you come in and you do. And so thank you guys. Speaking of volunteers, we're gonna start introducing all of our volunteer coordinators up here. And I'm gonna go first. So I am Sarah White, husband of this guy over here. Yeah. <laughs> husband, wife. This guy's my husband is what I meant to say. Sarah, what? Sarah, I'm not what, a husband, I'm, I'm a play, wife. I'm gonna play the host right now. What kind of coordinator are you at There you go. I am the discipleship coordinator. Right. This sounds like a, a cheesy stick right now, but. Did you wanna ask me anything else? Yeah, what do you do as like the discipleship coordinator and what does that look like? Yeah, so um, to be honest, I haven't done a huge amount, but I have started um, coming up with ideas. Uh, Lindy and I have started trying to get a list together of the DNA groups that are still in existence, still happening. So those small groups of three to five people that are meeting. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put a list together and that will be on our website. Um, and it will basically just say like, this group meets at this time. And it's, you know, if it has like a, I don't know, if it has like a theme, to the group essentially we'll put that in there as well um, like maybe meets at a restaurant or something like if things that you might want to know you know kid friendly meets with their kids things like that what time, of day? what time of day we won't put anyone's you know phone number or anything like that we'll just put like an email contact and if you're wanting to join that group then we'll get in touch with you and we'll give you more information about joining the group so that's something we're working on first um, down the road I really want to come and meet with all the leaders of the discipleship groups, see if there's ways that I can help you and just help help you, um, you know, just become more of a disciple of Jesus so that you can take that stuff into your group, essentially. We work with 3DM on the discipleship tools. I'm actually in, alongside my own DNA group that I lead, I'm actually in one um, with 3DM leaders. And so, I am learning from them as well, and then I'll be able to pass on that information to you guys as well. And all it is is tools. So it's just discipleship tools. They have a lot of shapes. If you went through the discipleship, um, what do we call it? <laughs> we can't think of what we, we call it. it. Discipleship class that we had after church. Yeah. You learned a lot of those shapes, and so I'll be passing those on DNA to DNA spiritual formation. There sessions. we go. Yeah. I couldn't think of what we called it. We'll do it again in fall, by the way. I'll there be passing be. those on to um, to the leaders who want that information. So I'm hoping to eventually do like a monthly email, nothing long, something you can literally read with in five minutes with a tool that you can help take into your DNA group. So those are things that I'm working on um, and I will get going probably more in the fall, as you know, summer with three kids at home, if you are there or if you were there at one point is really crazy. So. Um, I'll be looking to implement some of that stuff in the fall. So that's my role as discipleship coordinator, and you guys are going to get to meet a coordinator every week now. So you'll see the people up in front of you um, who are helping to lead volunteer things in our church. Good. That's good. And it's summer at Streetlight. Hey, give her some love, man. If you want to join a DNA group, if you want to get into a discipleship space to grow in your faith, like just come talk to Miss Sarah or talk to me. And uh, yeah, we'll plug you in, man. They, we got groups happening. It's summer. Do you have a good weekend? Uh, we got summer stuff planned. Uh, just so you know, like, actually today, officially, we're introducing some amendments to our Constitution. I know that's real exciting. That officially have our direction team. Does somebody say that? that's, that's exciting? That's exciting. Okay, I just want to make sure you're with me. That officially have our direction team, which is a group of men and women who live up to the standards for elders and deacons in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 13, leading streetlight. So we got a group of men and women that lead streetlight. They've been doing that for a couple years. We're just making it official in our constitution that we basically have men and women leading. So that is on a website. It's our website. It's streetlight.life slash amendments. Go on there. Take a look at the amendments. They're written in red. Okay. And I mean, we're going to vote on these amendments as a church community 
three weeks from now on July 28th. Now, you got to know, three weeks from now, we're actually having a church service at Chestnut Ridge Park, man. So we're not going to be in this spot. We're going to be over at the amphitheater over there. So we'll vote. But we're going to worship that morning. We're going to vote on the amendments. If you have any questions about them, reach out to me. Make sure the questions are literally like two seconds. I can give you a two-second answer. I'm kidding. I'm being sarcastic. However long you want to talk about it. You know, if you want to, like, get together and have a lunch about it, I'm cool with that. Like, I'll make space for that. So definitely let me know if you have any questions about it. We're going to vote on those in three weeks. And plus, like, that goes to further say that on Sunday, July 28th, we're going to have a super unique and fun day. Pray for great weather. Uh, we're going to be meeting at Chestnut Ridge Park and doing outdoor church there at 1030 a.m. It's right down the road uh, in Kenmore at 1926 19th Street Southwest. Chestnut Ridge like has this stone amphitheater that was built in the 30s that was restored. It's beautiful. It's like a natural concert venue. It's well, not natural, but I mean like the acoustics are great. There's a playground there. There's grills there. And we're basically going to do church there at 1030. And then we're going to bust out the charcoal and we're going to cook a bunch of free food for the neighborhood. And we're going to have this thing we're calling Hip Hop at the Ridge, which is a hip hop show featuring nothing but positive hip hop from 12 to 3. Uh, B Half is performing. Our, B, our very own B Half, Brandon Hathaway. I'll be back in a month. Give him a little more love than that. For God's sake. Are you guys alive and awake here? In the, good Lord. Come on, man. I mean, I love you. I ain't going to get mad. Yeah, I'm just kidding. So, and we're also going to have A Minus there, who's a positive hip hop artist in Akron. He's a great dude, and he's done some collaboration with us. We got ASAPs there, and when DJ Dramatize, they're all going to be there. So, we're going to throw a hip hop show and a cookout after that. It's going to be a great day, yeah? So, just know that that's happening. Um, we're going to have a cookout as usual, so we're basically doing this potluck style, and we're asking you to help out. So, jump into the email I sent this past week. There's a link. Oh, you got to split, man? Oh, man. We love you, man. Love you, Abedo. Give them love, man. Oh, we missed out. We made our announcements too long. It's okay. It's all right. All right, we'll get you next. It's too bad. I really wanted to play on this next track, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. So anyways, jump in that email. You can get in the link and uh, fill out what you can bring. Like if you can help bring hot dogs, bring buns, bring condiments, bring plates, bring utensils, things like that. Drinks, chips, basic stuff, right? And we're going to feed the neighborhood and we're going to throw a hip-hop show, a positive hip-hop show, and do Church at Chestnut Ridge, yeah? yeah. Yes. So all that to say, we're ready to worship and Sarah's going to help me out with this yeah. one. So get up on your feet, man. Yeah, do it. Will you pray for us for a minute? And just... Let's just jump into the atmosphere of worship and the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit right now, okay? Pray for us, baby. God, we just come before you. We are so thankful that we can worship you in this place, that we can worship you on the boulevard, that we can call out your name, that your name has power. You are good. You are what takes away our fear, what takes away our pain. Not that we're not still going to go through those things, but you are going to help to bring us joy, bring us peace that we can even have during really difficult things. And we are so thankful, Holy Spirit, that you can show up and you can... We can invite more of you in and you can change us from the inside out. We thank you for this worship today, for this community, for each person here, for our visitors, for, for our regulars, for people dropping by off the street. We are just so thankful for each person who is here today with us. We are thankful that the elementary kids are worshiping with us today. And um, we're thankful for Jolana, who will teach them after worship. And we're just thankful for uh, each person who plays a part to make this thing happen on Sunday mornings. So we just give this worship to you. You are everything. You are our king. You are our king, Jesus. We call out your name, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, say his name. Jesus. Jesus. We're asking for the power of the Holy Spirit to fill us in this song, man. Follow Sarah's lead, all right? I'll call. She responds. You respond with her. Respond with the moped. Come on, baby. Let's go. Amen. This is such a fun song. Feel free to clap, dance. Yeah. You know clap. it. We've clap. done it a few times now. Clap. 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 Or snap. Clap or snap. We reach 
Pin this once again. One more shout as loud as you can. Come on, sing it out. One more shout. Alright, we're gonna turn this out. And this one out, sing fill us, fill us once again. Go. Fill us once again. 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 Fill on, lift up your praise to Jesus right now in, a, in your own language, any language that you feel led to lift up, lift it up right now. Upon that cross 
bless your name. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your love and we thank you for your kingship over our lives. We thank you that you're with us in the mundane and you're with us in the complicated. You're with us in the good and the bad. You're with us in the struggle and in the joy. You're with us in sickness and in health. You're with us in turmoil and blessing. You're with us in want and need as well as you're with us in provision. We lean on your name. We bless your name. We lift up your name. We say that your name is holy and we say that your name is the only thing that's worth it in this entire universe. We lift up your name and bless your name with all our heart and all our soul and all our strength today. And we do it in our will when we can't do it out of our emotion. Because we know that you can empower that as well and you need us in that. And we thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, what's up? <laughs> and today, uh, we've got uh, the kids with us. Elementary class is going to go to a class right now. And they're joining you, Mr. Lana, right? So join Jelana. Give Jelana some love for caring for these kids, and teaching them, and teaching them the word. Uh, elementary kids are going. Middle school kids are staying. So ages 11 to 14 are sticking around with us today because it's a day where they're participating in the service. We got it set up so that the middle school kids, middle school st students ages 11 to 14, they come and join us for service on the first Sundays of the month. And then second and fourth, they go to their own classes, second and fourth Sundays. Third Sundays they serve, and fifth Sundays are a free day. That's how we do it. So, I'm pleased to announce and introduce to some of you and remind you of who this is right here. This is Sarah Klingler. She's about to bring us the word today. Give her some love today, some encouragement. Yeah, and bring it to us, Sarah. Understanding the book of Luke is the third book in the New Testament. It's also the third book in what are known as the Gospels. So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the four Gospels. Following those is the book of Acts. Now we've paired Luke and Acts together in this series because Acts is basically like the sequel of Luke. You all probably know about sequels, right? You watch your favorite movie, the second one comes out. Well, sometimes the sequel isn't as good. This sequel is great. Yeah. The book of Acts is great, okay? It talks about how the people of God are to react and live into the message that Jesus gave throughout his life, which we learn about in Luke. So there you go, a little primer. Um, so we also, though, are part of the great tradition of the book of Acts. The book of Acts is all about the early church. Well, guess what? We are part of that church now here 2,000 plus years later. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the honor and privilege of being Jesus spaces, right? We are living, walking Jesus spaces. You may not realize that, but you are. If you follow Jesus, that's 
what you are. And so what does it mean to embody Jesus? How do we live that out? It means a life lived upside down. The world has one way of measuring success and happiness and all of that. But Jesus says, I want you to live in a way where you give away your power. You give away your resources. You care for the marginalized. And that's one of the things I love about this series, which we're titling God in the Margins. Because God cares for the marginalized. And as his followers, we should also. Who are the marginalized? The Bible names them very clearly. It's the poor, the widows, the orphans, the foreigners. And today we can add groups like the unhoused, addicts, people with mental illness, those with disabilities, racial and ethnic minorities, our neighbors in the LGBTQ plus community. We serve a God who operated in the margins, in the person of Jesus, and we are called to do the same. Okay, so that's a high overview. Now let's start looking at our passage for today. We're in Luke chapter 8. A few weeks back, I wasn't here, I think I was at a wedding, but Ben preached the first part of chapter 8 on the parable of the sower. And I'll try to kind of tie that in with what we're talking about today, because I think that's important. But today we're looking at just six verses, Luke 8, 16 to 21. And I decided to title this sermon, This Little Light of Mine. Shining the love of Christ into our community. Okay, I, I heard some of you go, oh, yep, yep. Any old Sunday school people here? You wanted to shine your light? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're doing today. We're talking about this light. So, all right, back to Luke 8, 16 to 21. If you have a Bible and want to turn and follow, or if you want to follow on your Bible app, I'm going to actually read the passage in two different versions or translations. Sometimes I think it helps us to better understand. So first I'm going to be reading from the Common English Bible, or the CEB, and then I'm going to read from the message. So Luke 8, 16 to 21. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand so that those who enter can see the light. Nothing is hidden that won't be exposed, nor is anything concealed that won't be made known and brought to the light. Therefore, listen carefully. Those who have will receive more, but as for those who don't have, even what they seem to have will be taken away from them. Jesus' mother and brothers came to him, but were unable to reach him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who listen to God's word and do it. Now here's the same passage in the message. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a wash tub or shoves it under a bed. No, you set it up on a lampstand so those who enter the room can see their way. We're not keeping secrets, we're telling them. We're not hiding things, we're bringing everything out into the open. So be careful that you don't become misers of what you hear. Generosity begets generosity. Stinginess impoverishes. His mother and brothers showed up but couldn't get through to him because of the crowd. He was given the message, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are the ones who hear and do God's word. Obedience is thicker than blood. So I think the first thing that it's good to ask ourselves when we're dealing with any passage of scripture is what's the context? Now you might be like, I have no idea how to even find the context. Well, a great place to start is often to look at the passage that comes before the one that you're looking at. And as I said, Ben already preached on the passage that came before the one I just read. And that passage is known as the parable of the sower. So just in case you're not familiar with that, basically the parable, which is a short story with a message. So this parable, Jesus talks about the seeds of God's word falling on different types of soil 
or hearts, and how those different soils or hearts receive Jesus' radical message about the kingdom. Even today, we know not everyone is open to this message. Each person has to decide for themselves how to respond to Jesus. And it is not our job to bang them over the head trying to get them to believe. Now, also, this could be its own sermon series. In verse 11 of Luke chapter 8, it talks about the seed is the word of God. The, the word of God here is not what we might think it is. When we hear the word of God, we think it's the Bible. Well, the Bible wasn't even around at this time. Okay, the, the people had the Old Testament, but most of them would not have had a physical copy of the Old Testament for themselves. So this is not referring to the physical Bible like we think of it today. And also, this might be a surprise, Jesus is not talking about a message regarding his death and resurrection. Okay, that's what we always, a lot of us consider the gospel. And I'm not saying that's not part of the gospel. But here, Jesus is not talking about that. How do we know? He's standing there fully alive before them. So Jesus is telling them something a little bit different. He has a prophetic message that he's bringing to the people. He's preaching about holistic redemption. He wants the people to receive this message through hearing. Okay, first hear, accept through faith but then act on it in the way they live their lives. And we find this prophetic message that Jesus was giving earlier in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Jesus quotes from the prophet Joel, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. If we are going to follow Jesus, if we are going to shine our lights, this is also our message and our life's calling. Not separate from the gospel, it's part of the gospel. Yes, on this side of the cross and resurrection, we must proclaim those things as well. But they're not two separate, different things. The cross and resurrection is the culmination of the kingdom work that Jesus did in his life, in the light that he gave to the community. God came in flesh as a human to show us how we are supposed to do this thing. We think we know what it's like to be humans and what we should be doing, but Jesus says, no, I want you to follow me. I am the new Adam. That's who Jesus is, the new Adam, because he shows us the way to really be human. He shows us how to love, show compassion and mercy, how to bind up people's wounds, be the hands and feet of Jesus, and not just live for ourselves and our happiness only. God loves us so much that he took on the injustice and darkness and wickedness and death of this world. He took it upon himself. You know, we hear the story over and over sometimes, Jesus died on the cross, Jesus died on the cross. But let's remember, Jesus is part of the Trinity. Jesus is God. God died on the cross out of his great love. And he conquered all of that darkness, that evil. He reigns today victorious, and this is our own hope and light today. That's why Jesus came. Now, the time that Jesus lived, uh, the people were under the rule of the Roman Empire. Uh, this was not a very nice empire. I don't know that really very many empires are. Um, but this was a particularly oppressive empire. Now, they claimed that they were going to bring this incredible peace to all those who were under their authority. But Jesus illuminated the evil and darkness that was actually going on. They brought peace through excessive wealth and opulence and power held by just a few, and poverty and oppression for the majority. 
Rome was violent. They used the sword to kill their dissenters. They gave into all kinds of selfish lusts and desires, typically at the expense of the most vulnerable and marginalized. These are ways of darkness. And as Christ followers who want to live in the light, we are to have nothing to do with them. Empires far too often operate in darkness in contrast with God's kingdom. Even today, we have empires, yes. And if we decide that our allegiance to empire is stronger than our allegiance to Christ, we may just be aligning ourselves with the darkness. So if Jesus' life was light, if he's the light of the world, what is he saying in this passage to his original audience? What is he saying to us today? He's saying if we follow him, if we make that choice, it's going to just, it's going to take more than just saying we follow him with our mouths. It means we live our lives in a way that others will be able to see that we follow him. We can't hide that away. It makes no difference how small or insignificant you think your lamp is. Even in a small light, uh, even a small light in a dark room illuminates the space. Right. Now note here that Jesus doesn't say anything about people hearing the words his followers might say, but rather seeing their light. Now again, I'm not trying to dismiss the place of talking about our faith. That is important, but too often we bifurcate, we, we separate those two things and think this is more important than this. We almost make works the bad thing or the deeds that we do and faith the good thing. Now, yes, we come into the family of God by faith, but then how do we live out that faith? It's through the way that we live. It's things that people can see about us, our love of our neighbor our care for people, shining the love of Jesus into our communities. What's the point of having a lamp? If you hide it under a bed or put it under a pot, it becomes useless. The Bible has tons to say about light. Here are just a couple more examples. Matthew 5.14 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. 1 John 1, 7. But if we live in the light in the same way as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. And Ephesians 5, 8 to 10. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live your life as children of light. Light produces fruit that consists of every sort of goodness, justice, and truth. Therefore, test everything to see what's pleasing to the Lord and don't participate in the unfruitful actions of darkness. Instead, you should reveal the truth about them. So I hope you're really starting to see, as followers of Christ, we are tasked with being light in our community. Why? Because Jesus was and is the light of the world, and we follow in his way. In Luke 8, 17 to 18, we also see we can't and shouldn't hide our light, nor should we try to somehow operate in both darkness and light. Don't do that dance, okay? Because it's called what? Hypocrisy. And it's going to be revealed one way or another. God certainly isn't fooled. Our lives should match what we say with our lips. Otherwise, we're not participating in the flourishing of communities or we're not participating in the kingdom of God. We're participating in injustice and oppression and bringing harm to ourselves and others. We can't hide our light and we should not be stingy with our light. I like how the message says this. So be careful that you don't become misers of what you hear. Do you know what a miser is? This is going to date me. But I think of Scrooge McDuck, oh, yes, yes. right? He's the Scottish cartoon character based on Charles Dickens' Ebenezer Scrooge. 
Okay, so this little duck character, he loves money. He loves it so much. He counts it and he hoards it. I think even one time he swam in a pool filled with money, okay? He was not known though for being generous. So even though he had a lot, it's not like he was giving it away. He was hoarding it. And a miser often cannot even enjoy their money and become obsessed with keeping it for themselves and never even spending it. Let me ask you this question. Are you a miser? with the love and light of Christ? I have to ask myself the same thing. Am I a Christian miser? Do I hoard the things I know about the hope, mercy, and compassion of Jesus? Or am I sharing those and illuminating those things out into the world? All right, let's put it this way. Say you're out hiking with a friend. You get lost and it starts to get dark. You and your friends stumble over fallen logs, groping around in the darkness to try and find your way back to the car. I don't know if you've ever been lost out in the woods, but it can get really dark. Now, unbeknownst to your friend, who's walking several paces in front of you, you, probably can't see too well, have a flashlight, a small flashlight. And you pull it out every once in a while, and you just shine it right at your own feet right, to protect yourself so that you don't fall, but you don't share it with your friend. You just illuminate the space in front of you. Every time your friend turns around, you could turn off the flashlight and put it behind your back. So while you're able to see the obstacles ahead and avoid them, finally getting to the car safe and sound, your friend isn't so fortunate. They keep tripping, they keep falling, they get to the car all cut up and bruised. What kind of a friend does that? What kind of a person has a tool to help another and just keeps it all to themselves? This is what Jesus is warning us against. We don't become Christians just for ourselves. Our faith should not just be personal, something that I know Jesus, I go to church, I read my Bible, I pray. All good things, all important things. But if that's what you think or I think being a Christian is all about, we are wrong. And that's what Jesus is saying in this passage. We're hiding our lights under a pot. That's not doing good for anybody. We are to be people of light generosity, shining Jesus' love for all to see. And the more generous we are with our light, the more Christ will make himself known to us. But also, and this is a warning, the more our own spaces of darkness will become revealed to ourselves. And we will want, hopefully, to shine light into our own spaces of darkness so that we're not adding to the darkness and sin in the world. So let's be spotlights. Let's be the brightest lights we can be. You're like, oh, I don't have a bright light. Yeah, but you know when you're at a concert, if you've ever been to an indoor concert and the lights go out and they want you to turn on your, your flashlight on your phone, right? If I turn on my flashlight, the people around me are gonna be able to see it. But what if that whole place turns on their lights? That place becomes lit, <laughs> all right? So if we all together, as God's people, are shining our lights, it will make a difference in our community. Now, the end of this passage in Luke 8, 16 to 21 is interesting and maybe a little confusing. There's a little story about Jesus' family. Jesus' mother, Mary, and his brothers came to see him, but there were so many people around him. It was thick with people, and they couldn't get close. So someone had to take a message to Jesus and tell Jesus, your family's trying to get to you. And Jesus responds in a really interesting way. He says, my mother and brothers are those who listen to God's word and do it. Now, this might sound like a diss on his mom and brothers, but I don't think that's what Luke's trying to do here, actually. 
I think that he's trying to wrap up this whole section of Luke 8, starting with the parable of the sower, in emphasizing once again what Jesus wants his followers to do. Listen to the prophetic word of God, have soft hearts to receive the seeds or message of faith, and then not just receive that message and keep it for ourselves, but shine that light brightly and bear fruit of goodness and justice and truth. Then we too, just like his blood relatives, will be considered part of his family. So as we wrap up, I just want to say how lovely I think it is to be part of this community called Streetlight. How appropriate, right? I know tons of thought went into this decision to name the church Streetlight. Streetlights come on when? As it gets dark. They illuminate the path, light the way, and perhaps even bring a little bit of a sense of safety or security to the community. I know if I had the choice of walking down a dark street without streetlights or walking down a street, light, uh, down a street with streetlights, I think I would rather choose the streetlight street, right? Yeah, yeah. So streetlight, let's live into our name. Let's shine the light and love of Jesus into our community. Let's not be misers, right? Let's not be Jesus misers. Let's actually share and spread his message that is so needed in a world often filled with darkness. Can we pray? Good and gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the light and love that is revealed to us in your son, Jesus. God, would you help us to be people who share that light, not hoard it, but share it generously. Lord, if there's someone here today who just feels the darkness overcoming them, would you just reach out today? Would you help them to see that there's a different way? And would you use our community to help that person or other people that we meet to really understand the love that you have for us? Help us now to go and be the light. We thank you. In your son's name, amen. Uh, can we just lift up a hand in the air to pray for Sarah right now, too, and just thank God for her? Just lift your hand in agreement to pray for Sarah. God, we thank you for Sarah and uh, the gift of teaching that you've given her. And we thank you uh, for the way she engages our minds, the way you use her to engage minds, and the way you use her to speak out against injustice in the church and the way you use her to uh, advocate for those who have been left behind. And we just pray that you increase all three of those things. Increase her teaching gift, utilize it more and more, give her more and more knowledge from on high. And we pray that you would uh, increase her wisdom in engaging people who have been hurt by the church and who have been uh, cast aside and mistreated and increase her love and her care for them. And we also pray that you'd increase uh, her bandwidth to uh, walk alongside those who have been left behind and forgotten and marginalized. We just pray you'd increase all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Yeah, just felt led to pray for you. Would you give God praise right now? Yeah. We're going to uh, take an offering right now as well. This is a part of what we do. Just understand if you're visiting today and you're not regularly a part of our mission or a part of our community, we're not like asking you to give as part of your time here today with us, uh, we utilize this time to give people an opportunity to give if they feel led to, and we also utilize the time for people who are part of our community to continue to support our mission and support, you know, our endeavor to invite everyone into a lifelong relationship with Jesus. Again, when we say invite everyone, we mean everyone. Everyone's invited to the table. Jesus said it himself, many are called and few are chosen, though. And I mean, not everybody follows him for life, but we want to make that space for people to walk with him. You got it? So that's what we're about. As we take our offering, too, I mean, just so you know, I mean, we're participating in basically millennia-old tradition. I mean, it really started with Abraham giving a tenth of his, of his uh, what he had to Melchizedek, right? 
and then it continued on through like the Old Testament into the Mosaic era and the Levitical era and all that and all through the Old Testament era and then it carried on into the New Testament church where people continued to give what they were able to give, what they felt called to give. Lots of people want to put a percentage on it. People do that. People put like a baseline of 10% sometimes. But I mean, like, there's really not, there's no laws about that. It's more like people are called to give what they're able to. So we appreciate your generosity. Know that God is providing for Streetlight, okay? Like, we've taken a little bit of a financial hit recently. And what happened is three separate people on three separate occasions, and I just had a third one hit me up like offered to give this massive gift and they felt like God put it on their heart to give to our community. That's what just happened. Okay. So praise God for that. Okay. We thank him for his provision because that's what we're leaning on. We're not out here like trying to build a business. We're trying to do kingdom work and we know that God sees that and then he provides for it and we get to do it. Isn't that great? We're so grateful for that. So you are given towards kingdom work when you give. Uh, we'll hand out elements as well. We can uh, hand out the communion elements. We do communion every week at Streetlight. And uh, we just want to remember the body and blood of Jesus because we're also joining in basically a, a two millennia old tradition. As Sarah was talking about, I mean, the early Christ followers, the followers of Jesus, the early disciples, they didn't have a New Testament to study. Many people didn't have an Old Testament to study. Some did. And when it was available, they looked at it, right? And I mean, they, they poured into it and they tried to memorize as much as they could and dig into as much as they could. And there were letters that circulated later and that became much of the New Testament and things like that and the Gospels and all that. That came later. But in the early days of the New Testament church, one of the biggest ways that they worshiped Jesus and that they reflected on the power of the Gospel and the kingdom and all that Jesus is was what we're doing right now by taking the body and the blood, remembering the body of Christ that was given for us, right? Remembering the blood of Christ that was shed for us and taking the communion table. They did it all the time. They did it during meals and things like that to remember Jesus constantly, to remember what he's done. And that's what we're remembering today. I mean, we're remembering that the light of the world that helped to create the sun <laughs> with the Father and the Holy Spirit in Trinitarian community from the beginning before the beginning of time as we know it, came down to earth and became the light of this world, fully human, you know, fully God at the same time, and then willingly, you know, let the darkness overcome him and let himself be killed and then rose from the dead so that he could send the Holy Spirit to live in us so that we become really his light through him, yeah, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we celebrate, man. Communion is a celebration. As much as it can be somber at times, like sometimes we take communion and we're remembering ways that we've messed up or failed or, you know, we're in a place of repentance where we want to receive forgiveness and remember that we are forgiven by the power of the gospel, right? By the power of Jesus' blood and his body. And sometimes we celebrate and joy and remember his body and his blood given for us, right? We can actually simultaneously do that, too. I think we can get to a place where we can be repentant of the th those things and simultaneously have joy. Yeah? Do you think that's possible today? Can we take this communion, some of us today, remembering his body and blood in a place of simultaneous repentance and joy? Because both are always happening. Yeah? So let's remember today. Remember the light of the world stepped down into darkness, opened our eyes, made us see beauty that made our hearts adore him, the hope of a life spent with him, as the song says, as we sang. Let's remember his body for us. Let's take the body, take the symbolic cracker that represents the body together, okay? And let's take this uh, cup as well and remember his blood shed for us light of the world, his blood shed for us, tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin, gave his life for us, so we'd have eternal forgiveness, and then we could spread that forgiveness everywhere, we could risk everything for that forgiveness, because he risked it all too, <laughs> yeah, let's drink together, yeah, and we'll respond in worship as well, man, I had some other ones cooked up, but I just want to do great are you, Lord, again, okay? Will you 
sing it with me? Get up on your feet. Let's sing it, man. We'll get that track going and sing. Let's just praise God and say how great he is and just proclaim how great he is right now. Let's just invite his greatness in. <laughs> Let's just invite all that he is in. God, we proclaim that you're great. We lift up your name. We say that you're good. We love you. We proclaim love for you today. And we pray that your greatness would overwhelm our hearts and our minds in a way that is so tangible and so good and so real that we just can't ever be the same again. And you just keep pouring that out again and again into us. Just fill our cup to overflowing again and again with your presence because it's so good. We love you, Lord. We love you with everything we are. We lift up praise and we honor you today. Whatever you're saying to us, just seal it and complete it. Complete the work that you're doing in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing. You are life. You are life. You bring love. You bring light in the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. The great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs.
dwell in his silence for a minute, will you? Let's take a moment of silence to dwell in his presence. I just want to compel you to seek him in this way this week at some point. Sit at his feet. Sit at his feet. Let his light shine in. Let his light have his way. Let's seek him together in that way. And continue to do it, man. Continue to be the light street light. We love you, man. Peace. Let's give God some praise, man. Enjoy your day, man. It's a happy July day. <laughs> Hang out, man. Chill out. Please uh, leave this space uh, like we found it too, man. Do your best to like clean it up and keep it in a good place, man. The owners of the Buzzbin, they're they're under new ownership and they are like awesome, man. Nick McGraw, who who runs it now, is so awesome, man. And he is like an ally and a friend of ours. He loves what we're doing. He's got our back and he's done some great stuff. So bless him by you know keeping it clean.